Welcome back, and today we are going to be talking about considerations for a day pack. So there's a lot of, whenever you're looking for a day pack, some of the questions you should ask yourself is how much gear am I going to be carrying? What is the pack going to be used for? Where am I going to be going? It's just, just all kind of little, I don't know, all kind of little niches that you may need to consider for your pack. Somebody you know, hiking in one part of the country may need something different from somebody else in another part. A couple of examples of this are cold weather. If you're hiking in Colorado, up in the mountains, Washington, Idaho, the Dakotas, where the temperatures can get pretty high, you may you need a different style pack than somebody that's camping in the southern United States where it gets pretty hot. So, a couple of considerations is the padding here, the amount of padding that is on the pack. And some of the military style Alice packs with an external frame help hold this pack away from your body. So if you're hiking in hot weather, you may want an external frame day pack so that air can get between the pack and your back to help the sweat evaporate. Now, if heat is not a consideration, if it's no big deal, then then fine. These these packs with a lot of padding may be fine for you, but please be aware that it's going to trap some heat. It's going to trap some heat. It's going to absorb your sweat. And whenever you're dealing with temperatures in the hundreds, high nineties, that this this may play a factor in heat exhaustion and dehydration. Okay. Now, other items. Your water bladder. I've recently switched over, and I like these bite valves. This is a two-quart bladder. fits here in the top of the pack, right up against your back, right here. And to refill it, you just find yourself a creek or a stream. Undo that, and then use your water filter, water purifier, to refill the water bladder. Cleaning these, clean them with a little, little bit of lemon juice, maybe a little bit of vinegar. I carry a knife vertical inside my pack, out of sight of people that I may be hiking around, but easily accessible if I need it. I have a rain poncho, also make it into a shelter. My first aid kit, homemade first aid kit. I like these rubber plastic first aid kits because they're they're impact resistant, they don't bend, if you put a lot of pressure on them, it'll be all right. Metal first aid kits, if you put a, if you bend them or put a lot of pressure on them, they'll distort. I carry a meal ready to eat. This one is a number eight beef patty. Here's my water filter. It's a pure brand name water filter. Pure does not make outdoor water filters anymore. And they sold off that line and betrayed a lot of their loyal customers. I, I really liked pure water filters, but since they sold it off, I can't be their fan anymore. So, so much for them. I carry my Bible with me. Wherever I go, this is uh, King James Version. A little bit of dirt on it. Got the desert camouflage on the inside. It's got a stainless steel plate to keep the Bible from bending. And let's put all this back in there. To build a shelter, if you have to use your poncho to build a shelter, then you really need some cord. One of these, I've got some zipper stuff. I've got some mosquito repellent. It's good for keeping the bugs off of you. Around here, uh, West Nile disease is a factor, so you need to carry some mosquito repellent wherever there West Nile is around. I carry some duck decoy line for building shelter. This is like 200 feet of line. But it's not as good as the military 550 cord and a Gerber multi-tool. 
And one reason why I recommend this one, because I, I don't know if Gerber makes their knives offshore anymore, but this one here's got USA stamped on it. I support American jobs. I do not know if these multi-tools are still made in the USA, but if they're not, then I do not recommend them. Any company that moves its production overseas endorses welfare. If you, if a company lays off its employees to move its production to overseas jobs where they pay cheap labor, then I do not endorse them at all. And I know that some Gerber knives are made in China, sweatshops over there, so whenever you buy a Gerber product, please be careful. Make sure it's made inside the USA. Let's see what we have over here. Have a flashlight, say LED, River Rock flashlight. It's got a one on, push it off, or push it again. It's a strobe, emergency strobe. I have some hand sanitizer for cleaning up wounds. If you get cut, it's a good antiseptic. Also for cleaning your hands before you eat. And for building fires, if I have to spend the night, I have a flint and steel. And instead of using, well, these are just regular cotton balls. This is a cotton ball. Then down inside of here, I have some dryer lint. Dryer lint is great for building a fire. And it's cheap. You just pull it right out of the dryer. Your wife thinks you're helping do the clothes. She thinks you're wonderful. It's a, it's a plus plus situation. Okay, so there's day pack, some considerations and examples. Another thing is grab handle. Make sure it's got a good steady grab handle. Chest strap. This is good for keeping your straps from spreading apart while you're hiking. Alright, thank you for your time.